Okay, Jeff back again with another synoptic revision video. This time let's take a look at the consequences at a micro macro level of Turkey's depreciating currency. So the Turkish lira has experienced a very severe depreciation over the last couple of years. The central bank has been selling foreign currency reserves to try to prop up the currency. They've been selling reserves and buying lira. But uh, the Turkish president Erdogan has told the central bank not to raise interest rates to, to, to attract hot money to the currency, which would potentially strengthen it. 2018, the Turkish currency fell from being about 28 US cents to every lira to about 15 cents. Then it stabilised about 19 cents, but then since it's been falling even more quickly. Uh, and Turkey relies heavily on tourism, we're told. Nearly 8% of total work, total employment, over 2 million people employed in tourism. 4% of GDP and half of their service exports. There's an interesting bit of data for the extract. OK, so here's the chart showing the Turkish lira. It's now down, well, in territory in terms of basically buying about 8 US cents. So there's been a severe depreciation in the exchange rate of the Turkish lira to the US dollar and against other currencies as well. OK, so this is a moment where you might want to pause the video. Can you write down, if you're advising with me, three microeconomic effects of a currency depreciation for Turkey or a country of your choice. So micro. Uh, microeconomics is all about thinking about the impact on firms, on households, on industries. Whenever you do that, you're talking micro. Here are three points I jotted down. First of all, a falling currency, such as the, the fall in the lira, increases the costs of imported raw materials and energy for Turkish firms. Don't forget, most of these uh, raw materials, commodities, are priced in US dollars. And so therefore that rise in import costs, can you visualise that in a supply and demand diagram or cost of revenue diagram? That can lead to a fall in profits and possibly a fall in investment, indeed in, in employment. So one micro aspect would be to talk about the impact of higher costs on Turkish firms, maybe Turkish, Turkish car manufacturers or uh, Turkish um, uh, textile manufacturers. Falling currency causes increased inflation, and this then reduces the real incomes of households at a micro level. And also, critically for millions of Turks with savings, that means that the, the real return on their savings will be negative. So the real value of their savings will be falling because inflation is way above the interest rate on savings deposits at a micro level. But, however, some industries might benefit. The extract does talk about the importance of tourism to the Turkish Economy. So that was it 4% of GDP and uh, over 2 million people employed. So some industries may benefit the, the Turkish tourist sector because the real purchasing power of US visitors to Turkey or people from the European Union or the UK will be higher because they'll be getting more Turkish lira for their pound, for their dollar, for their euro. Although, of course, that might be offset by rising prices when they get to Turkey. What about the macro effects? What would you choose for the macro consequences of a depreciation for Turkey or a country of your choice. Well, there's so many you can talk about. And again, don't forget, always go back to your macro objectives. So inflation, trade balance, unemployment, fiscal policy, government finances, etc. Whenever you're doing that, living standards, you're talking about macroeconomics. Here are three points that I jotted down. First of all, it's likely that the Turkish current account, the trade balance, key part of the current account, would worsen. Uh, in particular, import prices for energy and raw materials will soar. Uh, they nearly always go up pretty quickly. And the demand for those things tends to be price inelastic because they're essential. They may have few substitutes. And you'll get the Jacob effect, where initially the depreciation of the currency worsens the trade balance for Turkey. Also, I think the second key point would be inflation, wouldn't it? You'd have to probably talk about inflation. You're going to get cost push inflation in Turkey inward shift of short and aggregate supply, and that can cause a fall in real incomes, therefore a contraction in consumption and possible impacts on investment. You could talk about the fact that rising inflation might cause businesses in Turkey to, be, uh, to lose confidence, to cut back on their planned investment, so that might worsen than the recession. And you could talk about uh, the financial flows in and out of Turkey. So the fall in the lira is likely to lead to capital flight at a macroeconomic level, Investors trying to swap their Turkish lira for other currencies, trying to move their money out of the Turkish banking system 
or out of the sort of basic wider financial system. So that could lead to capital flight, which worsens the depreciation of the lira. It also means that if the Turkish government needs to borrow money when the currency is falling, overseas investors, because of the currency risk associated with holding the lira, well, they're going to demand higher interest rates. The yield on Turkish government bonds will go up, and at a macro level, that makes it more expensive for the Turkish government to borrow, as well as pay back their external debts. In terms of evaluation perspectives, again, when you're writing an essay, when you come to the final conclusions, often a good approach to say, well, which is most significant, the micro or the macro effects? You just come to a view. You need more than a couple of sentences. You probably need to build up a, a chunky paragraph here. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the micro effects of a fall in the currency are often more immediate. We see them straight away, don't we? We see the prices of imports go up. So your real incomes, if you're living in Turkey, go down. Uh, the, the rise in real, um, collapse in real interest rates and real incomes threatens a rise in poverty. You know, make it real, make it applied. The cost of medicines will go up, basic foods, other essentials, and that will particularly hit poorer families. Inflation in Turkey is now heading towards 70%. And uh, inflation tends to hit poorer families more. So you could talk about regressive effects. Turkish businesses will see a rise in their costs of imports. And of course, many Turkish exporters, from textiles to car making, they rely on imports. Turkey tends to import intermediate products, manufacture things, and then export the final product. So if the price of cotton goes up, uh, we're gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit Turkish textile manufacturers and uh, the gains in competitiveness might be eroded. I think that whilst the micro effects are often quite immediate, the macro effects probably longer lasting. That would be my evaluation. So if inflation goes up and stays high, the Turkish government will now find it more expensive to borrow. And inflation expectations will become embedded in pay claims and also in the interest rates demanded by investors. So that inflation can become sticky. Uh, high inflation is often quite hard to get rid of. And in particular, the cost of financing external debts will rise now and in the future for the Turkish authorities. Much depends, of course, on the interest rates. Much depends on Turkish monetary policy. And in particular, whether Erdogan and his government continues to tell the central bank not to raise interest rates. If you've got inflation of 70 percent, it's very unusual for the central bank to be told to cut interest rates. It certainly flies in the face of conventional macro theory. And I'm sure you could build that into your evaluation. Okay, there we go. That was my synoptic video on Turkey's depreciating currency. Hope it was useful. If you enjoyed it, please press like. Stay happy, stay positive, stay curious. See you soon.